Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Today I want to talk to you about this Ozark Trail one person backpacking tent from Walmart. It comes in at a price that I don't think you're going to be able to complain about and has a pretty good trail weight as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so before I show you how to set up this tent and tell you some of its features and my review of it, I want to talk to you about the price, the weight, and the size. Now the price is definitely right on this bad boy. This tent comes in at under $27 at Walmart, either online or in person. Now I've done a lot of looking online trying to find a better tent or a lighter tent for anything close to this price point for backpacking specifically. And I simply cannot do it. Now there are a lot of tents out there that are lighter, but the truth is you have to spend quite a bit more money from what I've been able to find to get anything lighter than this tent. So $27, I think you're getting an amazing price to weight ratio, and that weight, advertised weight, is 3.4 pounds. So not too bad. Unfortunately, on my scales, it comes in around 3.7 pounds, but hang on a minute, because I'm gonna tell you how to get it down to 3.1 pounds. So the first thing you're gonna find is when you pull the stakes out of the bag, they are going to give you eight of these nice, heavy-duty stakes. These are gonna be harder to bend. They're nice and secure, nice and firm, However, they are heavy and they give you eight, but the tent only takes six to set up. So if we just take two out and get rid of them, we've just cut our weight now from 3.7 pounds down to 3.5 pounds. Now, I got thinking, I thought, boy, these still feel really heavy. And they are, put them on a scale and they weigh one and a half ounces each, meaning my six steaks here weigh nine ounces. So let's get rid of them. And at Walmart, right next to the tent, you're gonna be able to find these stakes, which are from uh, Coglins, I think is the name. They're all a little bit tangled there. These are nice long, they're orange, and they are these sort of triangular shaped stakes. These weigh approximately a half an ounce each, and they weigh, and they cost 98 cents. So to buy six of these is another $6. So now instead of a $27 tent, I have a $33 tent but I've just saved between five and six ounces off of my total pack weight. These weigh about three to four ounces total rather than nine ounces total for these other steaks. Again, saving me somewhere between five and six total ounces, bringing me down for the complete setup to 3.1 pounds. Again, I can't find anything on the market for anything close to this price at 3.1 pounds. There's another popular tent that I've considered trying for myself. It's called the Nature Height Cloud Up One. That tent is well over $100. If you get their lightest version, I think it's about $125 to $135. That tent is just barely lighter than this tent at five times the price. Now there is an advantage. That is a double wall tent with a fly, whereas this is a single wall tent. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Now, let's talk about the pack size of the tent. You're gonna see here that this is a pretty decent size pack size. It's pretty long. If I put it about my belt, it comes up to my chin. It's got a decent amount of girth. Um, but one of the interesting things is you can actually pull out the stakes and the poles and you can really compress this tent down. Let me show you. All right, so here you can see I've got the tent compressed down. It's much smaller. I've got no problem packing this in my backpack whatsoever. And then I just have to carry my stakes and my poles separately. Again, this is really small. Now, will it stay compact like that? Well, I've got the back folded over pretty good, but you could get a compression sack or something if you wanted, and I think you could get it even a little bit smaller than this. So the tent is actually pretty compact, pretty small. And uh, again, price and weight, I think so far we're on a roll. So let me go ahead and show you how to set it up, and we'll talk a little bit more about the features of the tent. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread my tent out and I'm gonna go ahead and stake out the four corners. One thing you need to be aware of is this is not a freestanding tent. You do need to have it staked out in order for the tent to function properly. It will just flop over if it's not staked out. So the first thing I do is I try to get the four corners staked out as tightly as I can. And I am using the replacement stakes that I got. These are the orange ones, the lighter ones. And I'm gonna go ahead and stake everything out as tight as I can. Fortunately, I'm in nice soft dirt here. It's working nicely. And I'm just gonna do the four corners first and then I'll show you the other stakeout points in just a minute. All right, so I got my four corners staked out. I'll take my pole and I'm gonna tell you guys, this is one of the easiest tents to set up 
not hard at all. And down here on this end, you've got a little rod that goes in the end of your tent pole. And I'm gonna go ahead and just clip this on, get it started. And then I'm gonna go down to the other end and clip the pole, the little post into the other end of my pole and work back the other direction. And gotta put a good bit of tension on it here. Oops. There we go. And again, a good bit of tension here. All right, now that's your main pole. And as you can see, if I didn't have the stakes in, that would just fall over because I don't have a crisscross pole system here. Now there is one more pole here. And this pole is gonna give you the sideways structure to the tent. There's a little tab. Put it there over the top of the main pole. And just like that. Now you've got your sideways structure. Now there's two more stakes you're gonna put in. One is gonna be for the vestibule. Now this is an area where you could, I guess, use two stakes if you wanted, but then you wouldn't actually be able to open your vestibule. That would be kind of weird. So I just always use one stake on the side of the vestibule that I'm not really planning to open. And that stakes out the vestibule. And then it's gonna be hard for you to see this, but there is one line on the back and maybe I'll bring you around and show this, but it kind of helps to open this only ventilation there is on the back side of this tent. All right, and there it is. I don't know how long that was, um, but that's one of the quickest setting up tents that I've personally ever used. All right, so as I mentioned, it does have one guy line out the back. That's really the only guy line on the entire tent, and it is to open up this ventilation right here. Unfortunately, you can see this right here is floppy, and I just don't know how much ventilation is actually coming up through there. While I'm back here, I also wanted to point out that there's no way to stake this part of the tent right here. It stakes at the four corners, but this is always a little floppy. I really wish I could stake that out right here to give me a little bit more room inside the tent without it wanting to kind of fold up and collapse on me. So that's my first con about the tent, but really it's pretty minimal. I've actually thought about having my wife sew on another loop here. Just keep in mind you're gonna need one more stake and another half an ounce of weight if you wanna do that. All right, let's go ahead and open up the vestibule here and take a look inside. You do have some Velcros here that cover up the little flap, and then you can just pull this zipper all the way up. And one thing that you're gonna find here is that you can roll these up. There are little toggles on the sides. So you can roll them up like this and you are able to fold them up. Now, like I said, I always stake down this side and just roll up the opposite side and I can get in and out of the tent that way. If you had a really nice view or maybe you just wanted some ventilation, it was a nice night, you could obviously pull this stake up and you could actually roll the other side up and toggle it as well. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just gonna leave it that way so that you can get a better view inside the tent. This is a rainbow style zipper and you can see the door is mesh, but this mesh and that small little ventilation window on the back are pretty much the only mesh or ventilation on the entire tent. So you do have this curved zipper. And again, if you wanted to fold that up, there's a toggle on this side as well. So let's just fold that up. And let's go ahead and take a look inside the tent. All right, before we go inside the tent, I do wanna mention the floor dimensions of this tent. Now, when I was in the back, I mentioned how you couldn't stake out the middle of the tent, and the same is true up front here as well. Now, if I stretch it out manually and I measure that, you're gonna have somewhere between 40 and 42 inches of floor space. However, unless you make some modifications to the tent, you're really not gonna to get to take advantage of that because it just kind of falls in slack a little bit. And you're gonna get more realistically somewhere between 36 and 38 inches. Again, plenty wide for my 24 or 25 inch uh, inflatable uh, mat that I carry with me, my sleeping pad. So no problem there. Now in lengthwise, it does stay nice and taut in the lengthwise direction and that is, uh, comes in at the advertised distance of 90 inches, and that's the same when I measure it myself. Now, 90 inches is seven and a half feet long. I'm six foot one, so you would think there'd be no problem at all, but I was still a little bit nervous about it because I wasn't sure how tapered it is. In the pictures, uh, the tent looks kind of tapered, but actually it has a pretty good steep side to it, and I have no trouble at all getting in here and stretching out my full length with a pillow, and uh, that's no problem at all. Now, I will mention, and I'll mention this again in a minute, that as I slide around and my sleeping bag slides around on my pad a little bit, it isn't necessarily uncommon for my feet to go down and touch the end of the wall, but there is plenty of space if you don't move around and you can just stay in one position. 
So let's go ahead and duck in here and let me show you. Again, I'm six foot one inches tall and I can sit up in the tent with just a little bit of room to spare. And if I really straighten my back out, my head hits the roof, but uh, that's gonna be kind of something that, you know, I'm not gonna sit like that. I'm just sitting relaxed here and I've got a few inches to spare. So let's go ahead and turn in here. And I know I shouldn't have my boots on, but for now I'm gonna leave them on. And uh, hopefully you can see here, I've got probably a good eight inches or so, uh, maybe six or eight inches above my head there. That'd be plenty of room for a pillow. I've got my boots on and I am not touching uh, the ceiling or the of the tent at all down at that end. You can see I've got a good bit of room, not a ton of room, but maybe about a foot beside me on this side where I could put some of my gear. And uh, on this side, it's not quite as much, maybe about six inches. So it's actually a pretty good sized little tent uh, for a one-man tent that comes in at 3.1 pounds. You can see here, this is the ventilation on the back side. And again, it's very small and uh, very, very little breeze is actually gonna come in through there. Now, I did just wanna show you here the size of this vestibule. I'm gonna go ahead and take my boots off. I should have done that before. But you can see I've got plenty of room here inside this vestibule to put my boots if I don't wanna bring them in beside me in the tent. And actually, once I close up the other side here, uh, there's enough room for me to put my pack in here as well. Uh, it's not a huge vestibule. Uh, the pack does tend to uh, kind of lean up or rub up against the side. So it's something you're gonna be aware of. But um, overall, there's enough room to get my gear in here and save myself a little bit of extra room in the tent. All right, so what's my conclusion on the Ozark Trail one person backpacking tent? Well, there's a lot to like about this tent, but there is one big negative that I haven't mentioned yet that I think you need to be aware of. This tent is a single wall tent. Now, the reason it's a single wall tent, I'm sure is because they're trying to save weight and give you a great weight at a great price. And what I mean by single wall tent is that many of the tents that you and I grew up using were double wall tents. They had an inner tent that had a lot of mesh to it, a lot of screen, you could get some ventilation, and then you put the rain fly over that, which would keep the rain out of your tent. A double wall tent gets more ventilation and helps to prevent condensation. A single wall tent, typically is going to have more problems or be more prone to having condensation inside the tent. What's condensation? It's moisture that's gonna be in there even when it's not raining, it's coming from your breath, it's coming from the difference in air temperature between the outside and the inside, and there will be just moisture, just like on the outside of a cold cup of lemonade, you get the condensation, same idea, it's just gonna be on the inside of your tent, even when it's not raining. Now this tent definitely does suffer from condensation. I, I was having trouble sliding around in the tent. I'd come down to this end, my feet would rub against the wall and my down sleeping bag would end up getting wet. How did I solve it? Well, I pulled out my raincoat, threw my raincoat over my sleeping bag and gave myself a waterproof barrier between my sleeping bag and the wet tent. The bigger issue though is then when I go to pack up in the morning, I've got a wet tent inside and you're gonna wanna be aware of that. You're gonna want some kind of a small towel or maybe microfiber cloth, something that you can uh, wipe up that moisture and wring it out outside your tent so that you're not just packing up a wet tent. Now, as I mentioned, single wall tents are known for being more prone to uh, condensation. So is it really an issue with a $27 tent or is it just the nature of the beast? Well, I think in this case, it's a little bit of both. It is a single wall tent, but I pointed out all throughout the video, the lack of, of ventilation in this tent. If you've got the vestibule down like this and it's completely closed up, you're gonna get a little bit of air under the, the vestibule, but very, very little. And then it could go through the mesh door. And then I showed you the very, very small uh, ventilation window on the back, which again, lets very, very little air in. Now, I think if you were to use this with a, uh, one of these vestibules open or even both of them open in a non-rainy situation, I think you would probably do a lot better. One thing that I noticed is that if I kept it closed up on a cool night, it actually did keep the heat in and I actually stayed a little bit warmer, which was really nice. But again, you just have that big problem with condensation. So is it a deal breaker? That's gonna be up to you. It was a real issue to me and I'm still kind of deciding how much I wanna use this tent and still exploring some other options. But this tent will absolutely stay in my arsenal as maybe a backup or even a primary tent for me going backpacking. And I'll just be a little bit more prepared about to, how to deal with the condensation. Overall, I think if you're looking for a budget tent, maybe just to get out there and try backpacking, I don't know that you can really go that wrong for $27 and the weight that you're going to be carrying. Like I said, I can't find anything else at this price point anywhere close to that weight of 3.1 pounds. And so overall, I think it's a pretty nifty little tent. I sure like it, easy to set up, fun to use. So 
Let me know what you think down in the comments. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.